So I think I've mentioned before that we can just simply consider, uh, excuse me, fog as being a cloud at ground level. Fog is most similar to what the stratus, the type of cloud that we call a stratus cloud. It's a low level flat cloud that forms in a stable environment. So what happens has to happen in order for fog, to result in fog is that we have to have the air saturated. We have to have reached 100% relative humidity. So whenever you see fog, you can think of these little liquid water droplets suspended here. And it's kind of fun if you've ever um, like looked you know, closely, you can actually see kind of little, because of gravity, little droplets, kind of a mist falling when you have a fog around you. So the reason we can't see, for instance, the reason you can't see these headlights is because there is multiple scattering of that light before it gets to us, pinged in all direction, all colors of light. Okay, so a fog is just very much a cloud at ground level. Now, in order for um, to reach 100% relative humidity or to reach saturation, two things we talked about in chapter four that can occur. And actually, it depends upon, depends on what kind of fog you have. We can either um, lower the temperature or we can introduce more water vapor into the atmosphere in order to get it to be saturated to form the fog. There's four different types of fog, and we'll talk about each one of them. And so there's radiation fog, advection fog, upslope fog, and evaporation fog. And at the end of talking about all four of them, I've got some pictures of each one of them. Radiation fog is the fog that all kids, when they go to bed at night, hope they get up in the morning and there's a two-hour delay. <laughs> That's radiation fog. The reason they call it radiation fog is because the Earth kind of oozes or re-radiates its thermal energy um, during the night. And it's that loss of thermal energy, it's that cooling down because the Earth is re-radiating re its energy it got during the daytime that cools down the, um, the surface temperatures, perhaps to the point of the dew point temperature. So um, nights that would favor radiation fog would be long. Okay, so you have to have, you know, several hours of uh, nighttime. They need to be clear. Now, the reason they, the nights need to be clear in order for radiation to fog, in the, fog to form in the morning is because if there are clouds, it, it holds in. It, it basically bounces back that, that energy that the Earth is trying to re-radiate out. Um, yeah, so what else uh, for this type of fog? Well, the air needs to be relatively moist, so the dew point temperature needs to be pretty high. It should be within 9 degrees or so of the temperature um, as the sun sets. And you can't have too much wind. I think you need a little bit of wind, but it can't be too windy. So I'm going to show you a picture of radiation fog. But again, that radiation fog is the type of fog we, uh, well, teachers and all students hope for sometimes in the morning. Now, advection fog reminds me of a scary movie. <laughs> advection fog occurs when you have, um, let's see, how do I put this? Okay, this is a cold surface, okay, and we have a chunk of air that is going to advect. Now, we've talked about convection. That's a chunk of air uh, moving, um, relocating energy. And advection is a chunk of air moving horizontally. Now, we're going to talk more about advection, the movement of air horizontally, later on in, in meteorology. But let's just say you, say you have a warm, moist chunk of air that is advected over a cold surface. So what can happen then is that warm, moist chunk of air, that chunk of air that, as it was warm, could hold all of that moisture as it acclimates to its new colder temperature, then condensation occurs. So this is called advection fog. And it kind of kind of reminds me of like, um, it's oftentimes associated with uh, the coast, coastal waters. One of the things we learned is that um, large bodies of water like the oceans, remember that they are stubborn to um, heat up 
And once they're warm, though, they're stubborn to cool down. So let's just say there's an ocean and here's land. And let's say you are in late summer. And so basically you have warm water here. Well, let's say you're headed towards fall. And so the land, we're getting some cooler temperatures here. So it cools down over night. And then let's say we can advect this chunk of warm, moist air in over this cooler land. And toila, you have advection fog. And so it's kind of that creaky sort of fog you see in the movies sometimes. <laughs> the third type of fog really kind of reminds me um, of a lifting mechanism we talked before called orographic lifting. Upslope fog is very much like orographic lifting and basically involves uh, a mountain barrier and you are shoving air against that mountain. So here's a mountain and let's just say it goes ahead and we have water here um, and a prevailing wind goes like this. So up so upslope fog would basically, as that prevailing wind brings this warm, potentially warm, at least moist air, slams it against the mountain and at some point it's going to reach the dew point temperature dew point and it's going to go ahead and begin to cool dew point uh, temperatures uh, th that elevation would be the lifting condensation level wouldn't it and we can have this eerie frog eerie fog on the mountain you've probably seen um, upslope fog before um, in kind of pictures sometimes you'll see like a little fog here and you know what's the difference between a fog or a cloud at that point I don't know if it's touching the mountain um, that's the surface is the mountain. I don't know if that's, you know, they're very similar. The last one of aberration fog, what all of these have in common is basically you are taking a, a chunk of air and for whatever reason you are evaporating more water vapor into that chunk of air. And it kind of varies. So going from a liquid to a gas, it's evaporation, you know. Evaporation fog, um, in one case, basically the source of evaporating, um, uh, evaporating va water vapor um, comes from a lake, okay, um, and we call that steam fog. You know, if you've ever, um, heck, I've seen steam fog over the, um, the Skunk River, um, and so what it is, again, is the river or Lake Geode or whatever, basically it's stubborn to, uh, it retains its heat. So even though throughout the course of the, um, throughout the course of the night, the air might become cold, you know, this, the, it's basically still evaporating uh, from, its, from its heat. It's evaporating um, liquid water into the air. It's, it's uh, vaporizing water. Okay, frontal fog is another type of evaporation fog and it's associated with a warm front. And, and the way this works basically is a warm front is replacing, um, when a warm front comes through, basically the ground is cold or cool anyway. And let's just say, and I don't know if you remember, but we said that warm fronts, the type of precipitation warm fronts bring, it falls from what we call nimbostratus clouds. So it's that kind of long sort of rain that falls, that lasts a long time. But as this uh, warm, let's see, if this, as this, uh, uh, as the precipitation from this uh, warm cloud, or from this yeah, warm body of air falls, it then goes ahead and evaporates some of its, um, it's very rich in vaporized gas, water vapor. And so that's frontal fog. And the last one up there is evaporation fog. And that's very similar to um, in your bathroom. Remember, I think I talked about a shower head. There's your shower head. And it kind of aerosolizes for a couple of different reasons. Basically, you have all sorts of water vapor added to your uh, bathroom. And so, you can go ahead and reach 100% relative humidity. So here are some pictures to go along with those different fogs. Radiation fog, 
Add the action, woo, scary fog. Um, upslope fog and steam fog. Uh, 